interesting decision by Parramatta. They've decided, having won the toss, to run into this breeze and into the rain in the first half. Obviously, they'll be looking to graft away and keep the scores close in the first half and come home on the back of this stiff breeze in the second stanza. Glenn Morrison, it was, penalised. Slightly high tackle there on Peter Johnson. Peter Johnson takes those sorts of hits all day. He wouldn't have felt that. And Morrison, who's one of the fine... The Optus Cup ladder with eight points as Morrison scrags Dean Pay to the ground and Simon will now kick long and out on the fall. So a mistake early from John Simon. You'll get some mistakes on wet weather like this, both with the kicking and the passing. And you've really this is got Kennedy! To... Kennedy makes the break! He's dragged down just 25 metres out. Brasher at first receiver. Stimson. If you remember, it was Balmain which put Parramatta out in the run-up to the finals last year. And Tim Brasher scored a couple of absolutely superb tries as Weber makes some space down the right-hand side. And Jason Weber will go in and score for the Tigers. Wow. They're absolutely stunned here at Parramatta Stadium. The Eels... They've got a couple of ducks in the lower grades. Balmain getting up in both under 20s and second grade. And Jason Weber puts them on the board. Four points to two. Yeah, mistakes are so costly on nights like this. John Simon kicking out, kicking out on the full and from the scrum. Balmain took the ball to the left. Back here, through their young back line down the right-hand side of the field. And Weber showed Stuart Kelly the outside there. And able to round him up. Another young player that Wayne Pearce has brought on in this club. Jolly, Gillette. Good turn there that brought the Parramatta 5-8 in. And Kelly was off put in defence. And Weber able to step past the fullback. And a great start for the Balmain Tigers. A good reply to the penalty goal earlier from the Eels. It was a great left-handed fan from Jason Weber. And then so he is... Also, Balmain's leading try scorer this year. Yeah, this would be a great deal of confidence for the Balmain side who've really struggled to score tries in general play in recent weeks. Most of their tries come from kicks. But a nice little back line raid there. The error count starting to... ...have uh, early problems for Parramatta. And that's what we talked about before the game. Parramatta, they've just got to be patient. They can't keep forcing those short passes that that they normally like to, to execute. And under the wet conditions, it makes it very difficult, as we see... Uh, Glenn in. Morrison's in some trouble out there. So is Peter Johnson. Yeah, head clash here. Both of them are pretty groggy. Johnston is, as we speak, leaving the field. And you can see he's rather wobbly on his feet, as is Glenn Morrison, who's out there in the middle. You won't find too many tougher forwards than Peter Johnson, and he's been forced to leave the field. Oh, yeah, that hurt. Head clash. Fortunately, one of those players was wearing a headgear, so the impact will be lessened somewhat. Morrison appears to be OK. Although Wayne Pearce, quite wisely, is going to bring him to the sideline to have him fully checked. Steve Mascourt, there's been a couple of replacements go out on either side. Yeah, that's right. Justin Morgan's gone on for uh, Peter Johnston to place. Paul Sirenin is having a bit of a rest. And as you say, uh, as you say, the lock for Balmain, Glenn Morrison, he's being checked by the medical staff of Balmain. And Mark O'Neill has gone on to replace Morrison as the Tigers come up with another penalty. Jason Smith. Territory is so hard to come by in conditions like this, and that's the second time Parramatta have given away a penalty. We're going to have a relatively long range attempt here from Michael Withers, around about 35 metres out on the angle. A couple of mistakes with the ball, a kick out on the full and two penalties playing right into Balmain's hands. And the last thing you want for this Balmain side is to help them with their confidence. These young players are going to thrive on this start if Withers can knock this ball over. Withers, he had early success from wide out. And this one looks pretty good as well. Two from two for Michael Withers. 
And Bell laid out now to... Yeah, and although they're running into the breeze, Jason Bell willing to kick early there, just to give Tim Brasher a reminder that if he wants to stand up close in defence, they will kick early in the tackle count. Well, Dean Pay has been penalised here for lifting in the tackle. He's not happy with the decision. And perhaps on replay we might get an opportunity to look at why. It was a great front-on tackle there from Aaron Raper. And Pay went lower and lifted up the player. That was uh, Chris McPherson. And the rules as they stand at the moment the tackle having been completed they're not allowed to lift a player off the ground you can't get a player in any city this is jolly playing against his old club this evening the club that told him that they no longer required his services well, he's getting the last laugh at the moment as there's a huge front on hit there from peter johnson well we've seen plenty of these over the years and darren santa let's hope he's okay he doesn't look too good at the moment, the Balmain hooker. He's been badly stunned in this tackle, but Peter Johnson, you have to be so careful when running the ball. You've really got to look for him, particularly front on. Watch this. Whack. That's why it hurt. And Peter Johnson, just wonder how culpable he might have been in the sense that he didn't appear to take the headgear out of the way. And he's tackled front on with the head. He, he does this so often with his defence. I've seen a, a lot of sickening head clashes. And we saw one earlier in this game with Glenn Morrison. But Peter Johnson leans forward. He's a big, strong man. He wears that headgear, obviously, for his own protection. I'm, I'm sure he doesn't use it as a weapon. But he's quite willing to stick his head in there. And as Darren Sander has found out, it isn't soft. That's a headbutt. That is a fair dinkum headbutt. What are you saying that's deliberate? I'm saying he didn't uh, exercise every caution. As we see Darren Centre leaving the field. Steve Mascord, you have a thought. Oh, I've got to disagree with you there, Eric. His head got involved in the tackle. He's in an awkward position. But I certainly couldn't say it was deliberate or that he could have really uh, avoided it, really. I don't think it's his responsibility in that, in that situation. But Mario still doesn't remember it. But gee, he, he's got the hardest head. <laughs> And as you say, it just hasn't affected him. He took one blink, got the ball and said, well, let's go. What's your problem? Has Balmain come away with it? Gillette. Everyone's running decoys and it's Brasher into the gap, but the pass has gone forward. Yeah, it was a flat pass. Nice play from Balmain out here. They took the option. They had a straight runner and a wide runner and very, very nearly got Brasher away. Here, Gillette. Dummies to the close runner, gets it wide. Yeah marginally forward but still good play from Balmain and some movement on the sideline down there with Steve Mascord yeah that's right Eric Glenn Morrison is uh, just warming up ready to go back on so it's good to see he's okay and ready to resume the kick comes from John Simon Heron's out to the right hand side he gets it back for Bell and Bell will cross to score the kick went up from John Simon we wondered how long it would take Heron with the initial catch and when the opportunity arose, Jason Bell was there to have the ball smuggled to him and he just had to fall across the line to score. Yeah, well, maybe the penalty, maybe the penny has dropped for Parramatta. A tremendous set of six, a couple of good charges and dummy half runs. And then the kick from John Simon. In these conditions, the kick is so dangerous. Heron got high up above his opposite number, able to get the ball back. And Jason Bell did very, very well to catch that ball at such close range. John Simon... A couple of tries in recent weeks have come from this kick and this particular play. This is a training play. This oh. is one that they would practice. And it's always nice when they come off. And Jason Bell did particularly well. They isolated the winger there. One on one. Chuck Heron, very tall. Get the ball back to Jason Bell, who did very, very well to be there. I mean, a lot of players would have stood back and said, well... Good on you, Chuck. Good on you, Chuck. I hope you come <laughs> up with this one. But as he did last week against South Sydney, he was Johnny on the spot. And if they can get it right across the game, over the 80 minutes, chances are they'll put it consistency week to week. Dean Pay, front on to Asa Milford. So now there's some sting in the Parramatta tackles as Hudson Smith takes the ball up close to the halfway line. 
Milford hit front on <laughs> and bounced back by Dean Pay. Didn't he love that one? There's one for you, Blocker. The big front row would have said, get back out on the wing <laughs> and don't come in here again. You've been warned. And we have David Riolo now forced to pick up the ball in his own end goal and it's Kennedy with a great chase with support there from Milford and Parramatta will have a line drop out. Yeah, look at the black and gold jumpers. Again, a great response to the kick from Michael Gillette. Got it way down into the corner. Riolo waited for the rolling ball to sit up for him but when he turned around, there they were, the black and gold chasing team they're pending for a very valuable line dropout and it won't be a very stiff breeze we'll probably try and kick this low and hard that's, oh, that's a good kick that's a great kick into this win oh and they've come up with a mistake on the first tackle Adam Starr so it was a great result all round for Parramatta not only was it a wonderful line dropout from John Simon but Balmain the first touch of the ball and put it down. To so Kelly as Morrison warms up on the sideline. And we're not quite sure what Laurie Nichols is doing on the sideline, but warming up is not one of them. In about such an important game for both of these clubs. Parramatta, who've had three wins in a row, but have at times been unconvincing in it. And Carriage has come up with a mistake in the play the ball, and it's been pounced on by Bubba Kennedy. We'll concentrate on the little things. I've done him a disservice. It's uh, Asa Milford. And that time there, the Balmain player really ran out of space. Normally on a dry day, he'd have held his ground. The Here's Bubba Kennedy. Inside ball for Kennedy. Frees it up for Brasher. He finds a little bit of space. Brasher. Gillette. The kick comes now from Gillette. Over the top will go Morrison. It's batted away by Ian Heron. And that was a try saver. Certainly was. Didn't even attempt to take the ball. It's a good tactic. It diffuses the situation, even though you're going to give it back from the line dropout. But Heron, rather than go up and try and take the ball, bats it away from the waiting Glenn Morrison's hands. Wood there. Ruled as a knock-on. Dean Pay as well. What about Not these people sitting out in this teeming rain watching the <laughs> hard rugby league supporters, <laughs> can you? Raper appealing for a penalty. This is Dimmick. Takes on the defence and beats them. Takes on Brasher, and he's brought to ground 20 metres out. That's the way to go. Raper for Simon. Steps through the gap. Finds Carriage. Carriage offloads. This is Collins. He's put down just a couple of metres out. Yeah, good scrambling defence from Balmain, but they're under pressure. Simon, the short ball on the run around for Dimmick. He frees it up, but it comes back on Balmain's side. A knock on from them. A little grubber kick early in the tackle count. We've really cashed him pressure out here. He's up in the line. There's no fullback behind the line. Johnson goes straight up the middle. They can go left or right the heels. They'll bring it to the right-hand side for Bell. Bell steps off the right and the left. Gets the ball back. No, nope, he holds it up. Raper for Simon. The little kick through. And there's any number of Tigers there. Now would be the time to score if you want to do it just before the break. Bell, the inside ball finds Riolo, and Riolo finds the Balmain defence. Yeah, not the play you're looking for. Now there was a perfect example on that particular play. Tim Brasher had actually made, Tim Brasher had made the previous tackle and was at the play of the ball. There was no one behind this Balmain defensive line. Perfect opportunity to grub a kick in behind and put some pressure on. They came up with the trick shot instead. And the trick shot in these conditions is not the way to go. I'm sure Brian Smith will alert his players to that. This one against the feed, is it? No, it was a penalty. Peter line in Balmain territory. Dimmick holds the ball up for Raper. The carriage out to the right wing. And Collins will play it 10 metres out. This is carriage. He's smothered in the tackle there and in fact pushed back about five metres. Simon. They've got numbers out to the left-hand side. If they can run the gaps, they can't as Bell has put down 15 metres out on the last tackle. They still work the blind. Over the top it falls to John Simon. Can Simon get across? 
They check with the in goal touch judge. Simpkins is taking his time. Held up. And we've got a man down in back play. Jason Smith it was with the over the top ball for John Simon. And Simon had the ball taken out of his arms by Chris McPherson. So that's a great decision. In this game, he's just four points short of his 400 in first grade. So disappointing for him. The keynote in the Parramatta room from coach Brian Smith was... The field. Kick it and chase it and wait for the mistake. This is Roper. Simon steps off the left foot. Goes straight through the gap. Beats Brasher. And John Simon will race away and score. The Eels hit back. They're in the lead. He put a wonderful step on the Australian fullback and made him look a bit foolish. Well, it's probably just as well he didn't kick it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John Simon, look at that. The Eels back in front. He accepts the congratulations of his teammates because this was all his own work. Stepped off the left. Stepped off the left again. Brasher beaten for all money. And from there, it was just a foot race to the line and there was no one around him until he crossed. Stephen Jolly coming far too late, as was Michael Withers. Yeah, Tim Brasher would be very, very disappointed with that attempt in defence. The fullback is the last line and they do beat a lot of blokes before they get to you, but the great fullbacks have great pride in their defensive line. And a one-on-one -on -one tackle there with John Simon, who's not an overly quick person, although he has a good sidestep. Tim Brasher really found wanting in defence there at the back. And now, the exercise for Parramatta. John Simon, strong left foot step. A brush off there and a big left foot step on Tim Brasher. Well, Tim Brasher should have known he had a left foot step because he did one not a fraction of a second before. He shouldn't have been fooled by that one. And it'll be Brasher to restart as he kicks in the ball before it went over the sideline. The one against the scrum feed. Exactly what we talked about in the first half. So Parramatta now through where it, whose mistake allowed the scrum feed to Balmain in the first place. He plays at 22 out. This is Dimmick. Steps off the right foot. Put down on the tackles of Brasher and Surinan. Brasher again has a go and is penalised. They're screaming for 10 minutes in the bin, and that's what Tim Brasher will get. He's not happy with it. But Paul Simpkins is reasserting his authority early here in the second half. Paul Sirinan is adding his voice to the chorus of disapproval. This isn't the happiest little period for Tim Brasher. A missed tackle on John Simon only moments earlier. And here, obviously offside. And marking up and trying to stop the Parramatta raid. They had the Belmain defence, the sixes and sevens. You can see Brett Horsnell there imploring Paul Simpkins to give Brasher some time in the bin, which is precisely what has happened. Well, he's going to concede two points. He's going to stretch Parramatta's lead to, to six. And he's going to ask his team to defend with 12. This is the problem for Balmain. They're lined out very deep in their own half of the field. They feel as though they've got to force the pass in. Oh, great run. We've got a break here from Michael Gillette. Will he have the support? He's shown the sideline by David Riolo, and Riolo comes up with the, the saving tackle. This is Weber. Weber. And he's put down 10 metres out from the line. Simon. Long cutout pass. It comes back for Dimmick. They've got numbers out to the right hand side. Dimmick's put the kick through. Will it go too far? Yes, it does. Oh, he had two men outside him. Surely a pass would have been better. Well, I think he's taken notice from what's happened in the game already. The long pass, very difficult to handle. Whereas the kick, you've only got to run forward and get a hand on it. He had three men outside him, three on two. And the kick through just too long and defeats Steve Collins into touch in goal. Ball skidding off the wet surface there. At 20 minutes off before he's been thrown back in. So it's obviously desperation stakes for both these sides tonight. Even though we're not halfway through the competition, they feel this two points is very valuable. Hudson Smith has injured himself in going over one of the Parramatta players. He hasn't even moved in back play. Well, it's only 11 defenders for the Tigers now. Parramatta, if they spin it wide, could get Balmain in some trouble, and Stuart Kelly will do precisely that. 
Yep, way to numbers. Tim Brasher off the field in the sin bin. Hudson Smith injured in back play. And this time it took a long cutout pass. This time executed to perfection. And Stuart Kelly, the 21-year-old, has gone across for his first try of the evening. Down to 11 defenders here. Balmain were not able to get up and put some pressure on the fella catching the ball. You see he had no one in front of him. That's a great pass. Was a good ball and a good catch. The thing about Kelly there, he waited for the football. He didn't, con he didn't continue running quickly. He really waited for the ball to come to him before taking off. The Balmain defence was thinned out by the two players out of action. And Stuart Kelly, calmness there from the young player. And even though there's 22 minutes to go, that could be the one that seals the game. Balmain... Gillette, a little kick over the top, Brasher in pursuit, it falls kindly for Brasher, but the tackle was also a good one from David Riolo, last tackle now for Balmain, they're running it, this is Morrison, the kick through from the back rower, but Shane Werrett is back there to clean up, and he'll get back out into the field of play where he runs into the tackle with Stephen Jolly. Yeah, nicely covered up. Working the interchange benches again. Dean Pay takes a break and Jolly pick up the ball from the base of the scrum. Gillette. William Kennedy at pace and Bubba Kennedy will score. That's exactly what we talk about. As simple as that. It was a planned move, one of those moves that you, you do a hundred times at training and the expectation that the one time you try it in a game it'll come up for them. Well in the first half they actually threw the ball past Bubba Kennedy. If you remember there was a forward pass to Brasher you see here, player folds out, Brasher, the player's interested in him around the back, and Bubba Kennedy took the ball in front, straight through the Parramatta defence and under the post. Six points gets them back to within six, and now Jason Smith can question whether or not that was the right option down his own end of the field, forcing the pass on the line. Riolo, all the Parramatta backs went with Brasher around the back, and selective pass by Michael Gillette, saw Bubba Kennedy with no one to beat. It's a great example, isn't it, of we talk so much about the person who actually gets the ball, but it's the person who doesn't get the ball. A hit up, last tackle now for Balmain. Jolly will kick long, it will hold up in this breeze over the shoulder of Riolo. Again, it's fallen quite nicely for the Parramatta fullback, but oh. can he get back out into the field of play? He does it easily. Oh. The chase was a good one from Balmain, but having cornered Riolo, they didn't go through with the tackle. Seven and a half minutes to go. I think Brasher and Bubba Kennedy have got to come looking for the ball around the ruck. They can't stand wide. Towards the middle. This is Pay. Last tackle now. This is Simon on the right foot. Straight through. That's the breather they needed. What a night John Simon's been having. He's kicked three from three. He scored a try. The fans love him and he's kicked a field goal, which may well put this match beyond Belmain's reach. Yeah, John Simon, he positioned himself well here and kept po kept pointing to the outside just as a decoy, straightened himself up, hit it sweetly. Cool as you like. Really stir you to appreciate the little things about the game and how important the difference between winning and losing is. Powell with the flat pass to Stuart Kelly. Last tackle now for the Eels. Morgan, the kick through from Morgan and where it will he score? No, the kick from Tim Brasher is a try saver. It's really only been the one blemish on Parramatta's second half. Balmain took full toll of that. Other than that, they've played this perfectly in the second stanza. They regrouped at half time, came up with the perfect game plan. The short dropout from Brasher is intercepted by Raper and brought back by Collins, so already they're just 18 metres out from the Balmain line as Dimmick looks for space down the right-hand side. This is Carriage coming back inside, and Dimmick will cross to score. Fourth try of the match to Parramatta, and how appropriate that Jim Dimmick have two hands in it. And the 11,150 fans that have stayed to the dying minutes of the game deserve a try from Parramatta. That'll bring them back again next week. It was Dimmick here with the ball outside to Carriage. Carriage came back on the angle. Dimmick snuck around, sniffed around in support. And it was he who went across in the tackle of Michael Gillette. 
sheer weight of possession and field position has paved the way for Parramatta in a storming second half to get over the top of Balmain, who had an 8.6 to lead, 8 points to 6 lead at half time. Great wet weather football on the back of John Simon's kicking game and better control from their forwards, Jim Dimmick. Be the only bloke in the whole joint who actually likes this weather. Oh, I don't know about that. It's a bit cold for my liking, but oh, I don't know. I guess yeah, with the wet weather, you know, the, the team needs a good kick chase, and you know, I provide the, the kick and they provide the chase. So you know, I'm, I'm only half the half the cause. Mate, after half time, you seemed to settle down. Your ball control was a lot better, as you said. It was a kick and chase. Was that an instruction at the break? Yeah, well, I don't know about that break. It was an instruction before the game as well. So. Uh, you know, I think we just knuckled down the second half a bit, a bit more than you know than we did in the first half, and we come away with the points. Mate, do you think you'll look back on the second half of tonight's game as being a milestone in your season? I don't know about it. I think it's a pretty key half. I mean, you know, Bowman are always you know, a tough side. They're very enthusiastic and very determined, and they've got you know they've got a good a lot of good young players on the side. You know, you know our, our forwards, you know, led by Aaron Rape. I thought he was outstanding tonight. You know, you know his first game back, he just led the way for our forwards. Your try, pretty crucial turning point in the game, and I suppose the other one was the sin beating of Tim Brasher. Tim, can you talk us through exactly what happened? Uh, I uh, made the tackle and I, uh, I got up to, to Mark, and I think Tim Dimmick played the ball and kind of fell forward, and I was there to tackle him, and it looked like I was uh, I did mark up. So um, oh, one of those things that happens. The referee didn't quite see it right, but uh, you know who knows? Could went either way. Mate, you were sitting in the rooms. I suppose you had people relaying the score to you. Yeah, you know, it's one of those games. I think. Uh, Paramount have played the ball a lot faster than us and dominated the rucks, whereas uh, you know, we're always going backwards and not coming forward in defence, which, you know, to their credit, probably won them the game. Tim, a lot of us were surprised in the first half that there were a lot of risks taken by both sides when the, when the conditions would indicate that that shouldn't, shouldn't happen. Yeah, but it wasn't too bad out there. Like The balls are pretty good, and uh, you know, the field here is, is great for uh, wet weather football. So uh, you know, a lot of things did come off in, uh, in the first half. But, you know, like I said, I think they were a bit more enthusiastic than we were, and, and that won them the game. Thanks for your time, Tim. Thank you. Back to you.